Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach Amy and I have a really interesting remount slash repair video to show you today. This engagement ring and matching wedding band was recently brought to me by the daughter of the original owner. Unfortunately, her mother recently passed away and gifted her these two rings. Her mother previously had all the original diamonds removed from the engagement ring and the wedding band and had them reset into a new ring whenever she was still living, leaving this bridal set without any gemstones. The grieving daughter came to me with the idea of setting garnets and diamonds into this bridal set. She wanted to use these two gemstones because garnets are her mother's January birthstone and diamonds are her April birthstone. This is going to be a challenge because the jeweler who removed the original diamonds from these two rings destroyed all the prongs whenever he was removing the stones. We're going to replace all those prongs with the laser welder and I'm also going to show you a really common jewelry repair called a reshanking. That's whenever I replace the bottom half of a ring because it's worn thin over the years. This is a really common repair that we do because rings are worn beside each other, they rub up against each other and it makes them get really thin and weak and eventually they break. Who knows, you might have a ring that's getting really thin at the bottom and might need a new shank pretty soon. So before we begin, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoy this type of content, like the video, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's begin with the reshanking process I mentioned in the intro. The shank of the ring is the base of the ring body. This section of the ring receives a lot of wear and tear over the years because it is the portion of the ring that comes in contact with things while being worn. As you can see here, since these rings were worn beside each other for years, the shanks have been worn thin, which makes them weak. This is why I always recommend soldering rings together if you plan on wearing two rings beside each other often. I made a video explaining this previously that I'll tag above. The new owner had a different finger size than her mother, so reshanking this ring will be the perfect opportunity to make it her correct finger size. She's planning on wearing both of these rings together at all times, so I will be reshanking these rings as one. This will also ensure that they are always perfectly aligned with one another at all times while also having the added durability of the new shank. I begin this process on my laser welder, where I will tack the two rings together from the inside so that they remain in the exact position I want them in when I install the new bottom half. I check their finger size and they're currently about a size seven and one quarter, but they need to go up to a size nine and three quarter to fit the new owner. I will now remove the old worn out bottom halves by cutting the rings near the halfway point. This is pretty easy using my jeweler saw. The scrap gold I cut off will get sent away to a refinery to be recycled. Now that the old shanks have been removed, I can pull the rings down my ring mandrel to spread them the appropriate amount to be made a size 9 and 3 quarters. The ends of the rings need to be sanded completely flat and straight so that the new shank will be straight whenever I install it. I'll use this handy belt sander to accomplish this. Here you can see that the ends are nice and smooth now. Many times when I'm doing reshankings like this, I will recycle old wedding bands that we regularly purchase from folks selling their scrap gold. This is an efficient way of reusing materials that would otherwise be melted down at a refinery. Here's one I had laying around that will work out perfectly. Since it's not quite the right dimensions to make the new ring a nine and three quarter, I will also split it with my jeweler's saw so that I can spread it open to the appropriate finger size we desire for the project. Now that both pieces are opened up to a size nine and three quarters, I can etch a mark onto the side of the material that I'll be using so that I know where to cut it to fit perfectly. Here you can really see the new shank taking shape. Now we go back to my belt sander to make sure that its edges are also perfectly straight and level. I do a final test fit and check that everything lines up perfectly and straight and is ready for soldering. I have these special tweezers that are designed to hold these two pieces together while I solder them. Before I can apply heat to the rings, I dip them in this combination of denatured alcohol and boric acid. This flammable concoction will protect the white gold from forming something called fire scale, which is basically a discoloration of the metal. It also makes this cool green flame whenever you light it on fire.
I carefully apply several pieces of solder to the joints of the shank with a liquid flux and begin the soldering process to both sides of the ring. Here I'm looking for a good, even flow of solder to ensure that it has a strong hold. Not enough heat for my torch will cause poor flow, and too much heat could cause the rings to melt. To cool the rings off, I put them back on my ring mandrel which quickly absorbs the heat. The ring then takes a bath in this heated jar of pickle. This acid bath will remove any fire scale that may have formed on the white gold and any other oxidation. I then dip the ring into baking soda and water to neutralize the acid. Now let's go back to my bench and clean up all the excess material that's on the ring and give the new shank its final form. To do this, I'll file both sides and the bottom of the shank until the seams are all gone and I'm happy with its shape. I also use a variety of abrasive wheels to clean up the inside of the ring. Now that we're all done with the installation of the new shank, let's move on to the stone setting process. Remember how I mentioned earlier that a jeweler previously removed all the original diamonds from this ring? Doing so destroyed all the prongs. I used my laser welder to build up all the prongs using 14 karat white gold giving them enough material to set the new gemstones. After the new material is added, I give the new prongs a quick polish to prepare them for the stone setting. I supplied matching genuine garnets and diamonds for this project. Now I go around the ring with the appropriately sized setting bird to cut a seat for each individual gemstone. I make sure to give the settings a final polish before installing the gems to ensure the metal underneath the stones is nice and shiny. I then carefully place the gems into their seats using this piece of beeswax. To tighten the prongs on top of the gemstones, I will use this air hammer with a beading tool attachment. This allows me to precisely push all the white gold on top of the gemstones necessary to ensure their tightness, but also keeping the prongs looking aesthetically pleasing. Once all the gems are tight in their settings, I do a detailed polish under my microscope to make sure everything looks perfect. We then move to my stand-up polishing machine to polish the new shank we installed earlier. I load the wheel with a polishing compound that will quickly remove any scratches. I also use this inside ring polishing wheel to make sure that the inside of the ring is nice and smooth. The ring then takes a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner for about 15 minutes until it's clean enough to move on to be rhodium plated. This is an electroplating process that applies a very thin layer of a metal called rhodium, which gives the ring a very bright white luster. I love how this ring turned out and the sentimental meaning behind the two different gemstones. The customer is also extremely happy with how it turned out. The moment I hand over a project like this to their owners is so special to me. It's always so incredible seeing their reactions and knowing I played a small part in making them a memento that can be passed down for many generations to come. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I have many similar videos on the way.